Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to the last and the 23rd part of the chapter Electrochemistry. In this video, I'm going to talk about corrosion. Do you know, when you expose metals to air and moisture, they tend to develop a coating on themselves and this coating is where this metal on the surface of that metallic object reacts with the air and the moisture present and results in a slow, a gradual chemical reaction and this chemical reaction leads to the formation of a compound which then either deposits on the surface or it just stays stuck, turns into a powder and falls off. And this process of the slow deterioration of metals by their reaction with the surrounding atmosphere is known as corrosion. So let us understand what corrosion is. The slow coating of surfaces of metals with their oxide. So when you say the coating of the metal with its oxide, the formation of a metallic oxide is nothing but oxidation. So initially when we talked of their deposition of their oxides, we then elaborated this definition that it's not necessary that oxidation is just addition of oxygen. It could be the addition of another electronegative atom or it may be the loss of electrons. So any definition of oxidation when the metal on the surface gets oxidized due to some reason and then results in the formation of a compound and this process is slow and it slowly deteriorates the metal, we call it corrosion. With the oxides, when the, the slow coating of the surfaces of metals with oxides or other salts of the metal is called corrosion. Now corrosion can be, we have examples of corrosion are rusting of iron, iron, the coating of uh, ferric oxide, the hydrated ferric oxide is nothing but rust. So rusting of iron, I'll insert pictures of rusting of iron. The second example is tarnishing of silver. Silver results in the formation of a black coating on it and that is silver sulfide. And we often find this silver jewelry which is tarnished and it acquires a blackish coating on it. So silver gets tarnished and tarnishing of silver is also the uh, is also corrosion of silver. So it is a process of corrosion that is a destructive uh, reaction with the atmosphere. Then you must have noticed that the Statue of Liberty is green in color and the Statue of Liberty was uh, made up of copper. So copper acquires, uh, gets corroded and acquires a coating of copper, car copper carbonate which is greenish in color and that's why you get a green coating on copper and bronze. I'll again insert a picture of the Statue of Liberty here for you to see the color or tarnished copper. So how does this take place? How does this corrosion take place? We take the example of rusting because rusting is the by far the most uh, um, that corrosion process which has caused maximum damage because bridges, all construction work mainly uses iron and rusting of iron makes the building structures weak. Many bridges have collapsed which get old and they collapse simply because the structure got uh, rusted. So let us understand how this rusting takes place and why are we studying corrosion in the chapter electrochemistry? Because rusting or corrosion is an electrochemical process. When we say that oxidation is occurring, any redox reaction actually can be an electrochemical, is an electrochemical process, a chemical process involving the transfer of electrons or movement of electrons or charged particles. What happens? Let us say that this is a surface of a metal of the metal iron. This line shows you the surface. On the surface, do you observe that I've shown a crack, a little break here? So at places, the iron object may, uh, you might have polished it with something. So at places, they might develop a crack and as a result of which the iron, it gets exposed to the atmosphere. As soon as it is exposed to the atmosphere, some part of the iron, like some atoms of iron may get oxidized. They may react with oxygen and they may get oxidized to form ferrous ions. That point at which the iron got exposed to the atmosphere and reacted with the atmospheric oxygen to form the ferrous ion, that point would start acting as the anode because what is the technical definition of anode? That electrode at which oxidation occurs 
and since oxidation is occurring at that point that point starts acting as the anode so the rusting of iron is a complex electrochemical process and rusting occurs always occurs in the presence of water and air and we understand this why water and air are required for rusting the first thing why is air required is that the oxygen present in air will react with the iron and result in the formation of ferrous ions and therefore the presence of air is essential so oxidation occurs on a spot and this spot starts acting as the anode so you have two iron atoms which react to give you two ferrous ions and this results in the release of four electrons now look here these two iron atoms here iron atoms in the metal they were exposed to air they reacted with air and resulted in the formation of fe2 positive ions and the two electrons that were released were were then transferred through the metal these electrons that were produced the four electrons they travel through the metal because metals are good conductors of electricity they allow the flow of electrons through them so these four electrons they travel through the metal that makes it the electrochemical reaction so the electrons they travel through the metal and they reach another point and which point would this be a point in the iron article which may be slightly damaged because at this point there is a possibility of a water droplet getting collected or the moisture present in the air may get collected here and this moisture which is present would attract the carbon dioxide present in air and carbon dioxide and water would react to result in the formation of carbonic acid that is H2CO3 if H2CO3 an acid is formed in a little pit this acid acts as the supplier of H positive ions that is the hydrogen ions so now these four electrons which traveled through it and what happens as a result of those electrons the electrons travel through the metal at another spot where H positive from H2CO3 is available so where did the H2CO3 come from the water the moisture present in the air that reacts with the that gets collected over the metal surface resulting in a little liquid so it gets condensed maybe due to high temperature low temperature and it gets condensed some water gets collected and this water dissolves carbon dioxide in it and results in the formation of carbonic acid which acts as the supplier of H positive ions the moment this happens the when H positive ions are available this point starts acting as the cathode right so this point acts as this becomes the cathode the Fe2 positive are okay the at what happens at the cathode now so the two elect, four electrons they traveled here they came to this damaged spot where water got collected and H positive is supplied due to the formation of H2CO3 so at the cathode what reaction takes place oxygen from the air the H positive from the from the carbonic acid and the four electrons which traveled which actually iron supplied they all react and they result in the formation of water now the emf of this half cell that is the anode the reduction potential of this is minus 0.44 volts where iron gets converted into ferrous ions or when we say reduction potential we say ferrous ions converting into iron and so we are actually even if we are talking of the anode and oxidation process occurring the electrode potential is always the reduction potential so it is the opposite sign on and why do we do it if you do not remember i would encourage you to watch the entire playlist where i told you that we always want the emf of the cell to be a positive value and that is why by convention we choose only reduction potentials at the cathode where the formation of water is taking place the reduction potential of this electrode is 1.23 volts now the overall potential of this if you take out the overall reaction what would it be the overall reaction would be if we cancel out all the reactants that are present also in the products and then write down all the reactants in the products so let's do it you have iron here you have iron you do not have iron in the product so this remains then you have in the reactants here you have oxygen do you have oxygen in the products no so oxygen remains h positive you have here do you have it there no you do not have it h positive and four electrons are present in the reactant side here and four electrons are present in the product side here so the four electrons get cancelled 
So this is what you're left with. So your overall reaction becomes 2Fe plus O2 plus 4H positive. And on the product side, what do you have? 2Fe2 positive and 2H2O remains in the product side. This becomes the overall reaction and since you are finding out the sum of these two reactions, the sum of the two electrode potentials will you, that you will get would be 1.67 volts. Is the EMF of the cell. E right minus E left will give you the EMF of the cell. So let us continue from where we had left it off that the Fe2 positive ions now these Fe2 positive ions which are formed at the, uh, at the, in the overall reaction which were formed at the anode, these Fe2 positive ions are also present on the surface. These will further react with oxygen present in the air and they would further get oxidized from ferrous ions to ferric ions. That is, from Fe2 positive ions, they get converted into Fe3 positive ions by reacting with oxygen. And the compound form there would be Fe3O, uh, Fe2O3 that is ferric oxide. So the Fe2 positive are further oxidized by oxygen from the air to form ferric ions and these ferric, uh, these when they get hydrated, they result in the formation of, uh, they, they release H positive ions further and they form this compound that is ferric oxide which is hydrated ferric oxide which is known as rust. It is a reddish brown powdery substance and as wherever the iron metal is exposed this rust is formed and it kind of keeps eating away on the metal. Now the rust that is formed is powdery in nature so it falls off. So when the rust that, is, that was formed which was in the powdered form falls off it exposes the inner metal to the atmosphere thereby again creating the surface for this reaction. So this, uh, the, this reaction starts again, again more rust is formed, more of it falls off. So slowly over the years, the air and the moisture in the air, they kind of eat away on the iron. And that is how, why, uh, how the bridges, they become weaker and weaker due to rusting. So since rusting is a destructive process, our, it is in our best interest that we would like to prevent rusting from happening. Once the chemical reaction has occurred, you will only waste energy and you can never get back the same structure. So what, is, what should be done if you've made a bridge and you have used iron all over or you've got railings that are iron railings, what is the best way to prevent rusting? The easiest way would be to cut off the contact with air. Don't let it come in contact with air. Now how can you do it with bridges that are so big or railings that are all the time exposed to the air? The easiest method would be paint them. Use an oil paint, a paint that does not come off easily on reacting with air and water and that paint will stay stuck. So one method, how would you prevent rusting from mercury? You can prevent the contact with the atmosphere by, there are different ways how you can prevent the contact. One is you can paint the iron article or you can, correct, you can cover it with bisphenol, you can use a compound to cover it up and that compound acts as a barrier and does not let it come in contact with the air or you can cover it, coat it with tin, you can coat it with zinc. Zinc and tin are less reactive, they do not tend to uh, get corroded. So you will coat the metal with a little tin or a little zinc and that would also uh, prevent the metal, the iron from coming in contact and it would not get rusted. So even tin, uh, yeah, tin and zinc, both of them do not get rusted. Therefore, you would use a thin coating of these over the iron article will protect them. Now finally, there is another method which is an electrochemical method which, is, which can be used to prevent, the, uh, prevent rusting. And this is kind of, uh, you know, a method where we are using metals that, are, that have a stronger tendency to get corroded. So when you have, whenever you have a competition or, or a race, a person who runs faster would obviously take over and the ones who do not run as fast will be left behind. It is the same thing. You use electrodes or metals that have a stronger tendency to get corroded than iron. And when you do that, something that has a stronger tendency to get oxidized than iron or which is higher up in the electrochemical series than iron, that metal can be kept in close proximity. And when you do that, 
it acts as a sacrificial uh, electrode you know you're going to sacrifice that electrode because when it comes in contact with air instead of the iron reacting it is that metal which is going to react fast or first and since it reacts first it does not allow the iron to react with the air but in this process since that metal has reacted you are sacrificing that metal is going to be wasted because you're using that to get corroded instead but technically if you really see it is an electrochemical process which can be used so this is known as using a sacrificial electrode examples of sacrificial electrodes are magnesium zinc metals who are higher up in the electrochemical series so with this we come to an end of corrosion and to an end to this chapter electrochemistry if you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now